welcome to Modcast, a civilization podcast focused on game modding. Rob R8XFT. Vice Virtuoso. Narad. We yes. Dan is really good at editing these modcasts. You'll find that we'll rub it on a bit and we'll think, oh, that won't sound good on the modcast, but actually, when he actually puts it together, it'll sound okay. We can all vouch for that. Recorded for episode 69 with Rob R8XFT. Vice Virtuoso. Narad. And we, yes. There are quite a, a lot of good art mods from the UG. Tomatex Historical Religions is sort of an art mod. That's a must, especially as being colonialist legacies, as somebody who builds historical civilizations that are as niche as possible, almost, it seems, civilizations that nobody's heard of, and then make them interesting enough that everyone wants to hear about them. Definitely. I'd never heard of the Dene, but I found it such an interesting Civ to play. I stand out for me in Civ Five with a drummer. Yeah, everybody seems to love that mod, which is kind of funny because it was one of the ones that we struggled with the most when we were designing it. Being able to actually look through a huge catalog of art, arted religions, and find the one that you feel fits the best and pick that. Tomatek actually went out of his way to include religions for Colonialist Legacies. He did the same thing for Anno Domini as well. He's included some of the ancient religions. Very thankful and very grateful for him doing that for me done something like that for Civ 6 as well. Yeah, and it's, it's just a nice little touch to be able to say, this religion fits my team. If you are playing one of the historical peoples of the Middle East, one of the not-Christians and not-Muslims, being able to pick something more accurate would be better. Yeah, maybe there needs to be some religions in there that aren't actual religions, and the facility for it to say, as well as preferred religion, this Civ won't choose. Yeah, that would be nice. Antagonistic religions. Well, that's why Fraxis in Civ 6, basically you choose an icon and give your religion a name, rather than being forced to use the seven original ones or the ones added by Tomatek in Civ 5. I can just pick up a generic icon and call it Leism, and we're done. Oh, absolutely. Right. But, you, but you're a human player. So you can do that. But you might meet Saladin, who's a chosen Christianity, because that randomly is what came up, because yeah. his religion wasn't available. So that's the other thing to consider. And of course, we'll have the preferred religion. And what we found in Civ Five was, quite often, you'd have, I don't know, one civilization that didn't have a preference, so choose Christianity. So then a Christian religion wouldn't be able to choose that anymore, so they choose Islam, which meant that the next one who really should have chosen Islam, doesn't have that either, and and so on and so forth. It's very much aggravated when you add mods to the mixture, because then what ends up happening is, especially if you like JFE mods, you end up with 20 of your 30 sieves prefer Christianity. Yeah. And even if you have Tomatek's religion, okay, so uh, 15 of them prefer Roman Catholicism, and one of them's Calvinist, one of them's Anglican, but the other three of them are Reformers. Well, then you're going to get this randomization, which, I mean, historical religions is going to solve that, but it's at least a much nicer step in the right direction. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying that Tomatex religions are bad or anything like that. It's just I'm mentioning that that's one of the reasons why oh, no. why Firaxis added those generic ones in there was to get around the user right. who doesn't feel like they like any of the available choices. And then the AI will just make crazy choices based on who picked first. Maybe the answer is to have a religion per sieve, but I know you can't really do that with things like Christianity. It, it could have been something that they actually could have done. They didn't. And I realize that's because religions are one of those things where people have strong preferences. As humans, they may feel that, well, I don't care that I am playing as feudal Japan. I'm a Christian. I'm going to choose Christianity every time. And some people are going to feel that way, and some people are going to be rather put off if you say, no, Zen Buddhism is the only choice. You founded Zen Buddhism because you're Japan. That being said, it wouldn't have been that hard for you to have added an icon and a text file and said, well, this is now your sieve, has a religion every time it's this one. Yeah, I mean, it's not too hard to add like a, a religion to a sieve that you put out and say that if the sieve has a preference for that, you as a human player can override that preference. 
But if, for example, the Boudicca has the uh, sort of... Andrast was her goddess, wasn't it? So if she has something connected to that as the religion base, then it means that if you're playing against Boudicca, then she will always select that because nobody else will consider that as an option unless they choose it randomly, I guess. But um, as time goes by, there'll be more and more icons, I think. Maybe somebody should bring out a pack of random icons that could be used for religion number 234. I think I want to put a little plug in for Firebug. He kind of came out of nowhere. You know, I did a little bit of collaborations with Firebug in late Civilization V. We made the Tlingit together. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't take offense to this, but it was uh, it was almost like three weeks of Firebug panicking. But come Civilization VI, he's got more mod in the workshop in terms of civs than everyone else. I've heard some things about the art. It's certainly not Jan-level art. And there might be a little bit of balance going on, but he's figured out pretty much independently the mod tools quite well and has produced at least creative mods. Yes. And I think that as time goes on, we're going to see him really improve and become one of the, the major players, potentially, in Civilization VI. I did a quick survey of like the first three or four pages on the Steam Workshop. He's got a Sweden, an Ashoka India, a Napoleon III of France. That's not bad for how long has it been since the workshop came out? I can say for myself, I've got a bunch of XML and SQL text documents that I've crumpled up and thrown in the corner in that time. <laughs> Senshi has put out a Nabunganaga. I used to pronounce that in Japan. The no, same guy that was in Civ 5. Divine Yuri has got an Eisenhower United States. Rob's obviously got his land of punt. JFD has got Nicholas II of Germany and Hitler of Germany. Vice Virtual's got his Gilgamesh from the Fate series. There's also a Kingdom of Hyrule, which is a fantasy civ based on whichever game or anime series, I'm not sure which. The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, by Watcher Ninth and Dester584, I just mangled those two names. So not only are we seeing the, the standard players, but we're seeing new players like Firebug and these two guys who put out the Kingdom of Hyrule, so... You know, since the workshop came out for Civ Six, it looks like modding is starting to come on. The faucet's been turned on. What really interests me in the last year, Colonial Legacies has been burned out, Vice has been burned out, JFD's been working on DLCs more than Civilizations, and in the vacuum that that has sort of left behind, we've had a number of new Civilization Five modders popping up. Senshi's one of them, Erdnot, Iger Caesar, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong firebugs in that list and those guys have been excellent modders they have had a lot of creativity that has been frankly speaking rare among the civilization five teams I'm not saying that jfd isn't creative super Tact isn't creative I'm not saying that at all just that we've all kind of existed in these little boxes of where our mods are going to go in terms of their abilities and the ideas behind them and these guys have had drastically different arenas to play in and many of those are starting to show up as you can see in civilization six you've got firebug you've got senshi i'm waiting to see if uc jumps over into civilization six and at that point i think we're going to see a really great future of extremely creative energies that are working with each other and against each other, if you will, in these rivalries. I mean, it used to be that we had this kind of triad going in Civilization V between more civs and Colonialist Legacies and JFD. It looks to me, as a member of Colonialist Legacies, it looks like we're going to have a really hard road ahead of us <laughs> with, you know, a dozen... So we're talking just in terms of civ creation with the triad. Right, right, right. Yeah, not throwing shade at people creating maps and extensions or vice creating fictional civs, which didn't factor into that same concept. It was just the historical civilizations with ambitious art kind of triad going on. And I'm looking at this list of what's already out in the first month, if you will, a couple weeks really, going, there is not going to be a triad of, well, we're the three guys on top. <laughs> there is just so many mods coming out. Some of them have art. Some of them have 3D art. Secret is going to be scary. First, it's going to mostly depend on how many of the old Civ 5 guards stick with 6. You know, some of them might 
mod six for a bit and then discover they don't really like doing it and then move back to five. In yeah. which case, they'll keep going with five and then more of the, uh, the new blood will be sticking with six and uh, getting better at six modding. There might be, you know, the kind of triad in Civ six again, but it may be different people this time. Yeah, right. and the other thing I'm seeing is there's a lot of people posting stuff. I don't recognize the names, and I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. Now, this would be more for five and six that certain members of the modding community have set up an impressive discord for training people to become modders, and we're starting to see some of the root from some of that. It is one of these funny things, and it's maybe humbling for many of us that think that we're the modding core to suddenly have a mod come out of left field from somebody in Civilization VI that we're still trying to figure out how Civilization VI even works and somebody's posting a mod. Yeah, that's the case with Astog Guy on Steam Workshop. He's got four or five UI mods that rework just about everything. And they're fantastic. Yeah, and then there's a somebody called Anance, and I'm not sure whether that's the same person that is on Civ Fanatics as calls himself Anance the Spider or something similar. Yeah, I believe that is the same person, yep. But that guy's also got a whole bunch of stuff that looks pretty interesting and fun and, and well yeah, done. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to go through his mods. They are definitely more of the kind of rebalancing mods. Yeah. I mean, that means that you have somebody who's got, I can't tell you because I haven't gone through it, whether it's a good or a bad one, a vision for game design and game balance and saying, let's move these things around. And those kind of people can become very, very good modders. They spend enough time with it because they become like the JF DLC kind of thing. And the other thing I saw, and I don't know if it's still going on, but at least when Civ 6 first released, it looked like there were a fair number of people from Civ 4 who were coming over and trying out modding in Civ 6. And that's also a good thing, too. Although it was, <laughs> and it's just my Civ 5 arrogance here, kind of <laughs> funny explaining to them, no, 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 you don't need the whole file, you just need the piece you want to change. Yeah. Which for me, you know, a lot of kudos to the people who are coming over from Civ 4 and struggling at first because the systems are vastly different in the way that Civ 5 and Civ 6 handles, I want to change this item of the game. Yes. I get the feeling there may be much less retention of four modders than five modders. True, true. Yeah, I think it will be uh, even more bizarre for four modders. Civilization Five, as I understand it, was quite the different uh, environment than Civ Four, and then Civ Six is built on top of that. Yeah, like Civ Four used Python for its scripting language rather than Lua, so if you're moving from four to six, suddenly you, you're contending with a brand new scripting language. Yeah, I would have liked Python to come back. But I'm very proficient with Lua, so it's not like I have much to complain about. But there are certain things that Lua does fairly poorly that Python does very well, and vice versa. Yeah, I personally do prefer Lua. I've worked with Python some, but I'm just much more proficient with Lua. I'm proficient with neither. <laughs> All I know about Python is it sounds like a snake. The thing with Lua specifically is it was also created specifically for user interfaces. So Python is much better for running little scripts that do cool things, but when it comes to actually display and hooking up the display to do things, which was something that I was very bad at in Civilization V and want to get better at in Civilization VI, Lua just makes it so much easier. The one thing that they um, didn't realize, I think, for modders, was that when you actually get something off the Steam Workshop, it goes into your folder as a number. They didn't think that we'd want to actually go into the file and see how something worked, and so you have, if, you, if you download all, a few all of a sudden... You have to work out which one's which. Yeah. My understanding is that that's a Steam thing. That wasn't something that Firaxis decided. Oh, right. Apparently Steam is doing that with other games as well, where they're putting it into the Steam Workshop content folder, and then it's under a mystery folder numbers from there. Recorded for episode 70 with Rob R8XFT. No, right. We, yes. And Deliberator. What things are you guys working on? So I know Dom and I, of course. New version out. Go and check it out. It's uh, got quite a, a few updates to it. And it's got its own forum as well, now on Civ Fanatic. So there you go. So I'm going to assume as well, Lee, you're working primarily on buildings or fun. Yeah, I'm just working on a little bit of balance. And I'm thought processing a possibly two mods. Again, will be kind of heavily LUA dependent. But I haven't decided which of the two or if either of the two I'm going to proceed with. One would be religion actually does stuff, 
In other words, when you select your religion, if you pick Protestantism, let's say, this unlocks a series of abilities just by the fact that you chose that as your religion. If you pick Catholicism, that unlocks something else on a different series. The other mod would be like a cultural diversity light and probably based off the Civ's ethnicity data to where if you are South African, say, then this unlocks for those kind of Civs these things. If you're Mediterranean, it unlocks a different set of things and some, and there might be some overlap. I'm actually working on a similar concept, a religion thing, so you and I should probably talk about that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure it's necessarily feasible at the current state, but I call it religions have teeth. It well, I, I was going to call it religions do dirty word. Yeah. It starts with an uh, S. <laughs> I, well, and I'm, I'm not sure that uh, religions have teeth is going to work necessarily as well in the acronym. I'm still working on that name. I wanted to, first of all, add real world concepts into religions so that they're not just these generic religious-ish beliefs that don't offend anyone, but to actually add actual belief systems into from that religion. So when you pick that religion, you don't just get a couple of bonuses. You also get to say, okay, I'm, we have the doctrine of transubstantiation. But what I actually wanted to do, because I thought this would be a really great thing to do with Europe mods when I was playing a bunch of JFD mods, the light kind of came on and I went, you know what would be great? It would be great if you could convert someone else to your religion and then have them have different beliefs than you. So what I kind of want to do is unlock theology slots from the policy system, create theology slots that you get a couple more of them as time goes on, but then you also, each religion of the core religions has theology policies that you can choose a couple of them. So in this way, like what I wanted to do was have this situation where you're playing as Germany, and you create Protestantism, and you spread it to, say, England, and they're also Protestant, but they have different beliefs than you. They have chosen, like, denominational differences, and that can cause stress between leaders. I like that idea. I was thinking of some sort of schism sort of idea myself. I think it'd be great if you had a certain religion that got so far around the world, then the kind of have almost not 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 a civil war type thing but an almost split in two and create two different religions so you get you know in protestantism of course yeah so well that's, that's a great example isn't it that. so christianity becomes protestantism and catholicism for example i know there are other schisms to it but and then if you actually are protestant you're probably aware that there are baptists and they have different beliefs yeah. than Lutherans, and this, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And they're all sort of in the same group, and unless they are diametrically opposed in their beliefs, and that would be one of the things to try to figure out how to do is a diametrically opposed belief system. If they are diametrically opposed, then they might not get along, but for the most part, Protestant, light, less mainstream, or evangelical Protestants all see each other as being shades of the same thing. So... There you have this system where you could say, okay, these guys get along, even though they have different beliefs, but these guys don't. The thing that I haven't figured out yet, and this is all in the thinky phase, is how does this translate into the religion victory? Because that's the thing, is if you play around with the religion, you run the risk of the religious victory becoming broken. Yes. One way or the other. Well, you could, but don't forget, you could have better ramifications as well, or all the ramifications. So, for instance, one of the things that I've always said since Civ 1 is Civ 1 had the ability for civil war. And so what one big kingdom would suddenly split into two. That's how it, how it kind of worked. It'd be good if there were stresses that were put upon a civilization, such as religion suddenly being split into two factions that would give cities probably uh, a little bit more facility to split into two. So if you had, I, I don't know, London, Birmingham and Leeds in your English civilization who were all Buddhists and you had other cities that were Protestant, that probably that would put a pressure on the English Civ dividing into two separate civilizations, And, you know, it'd be great to kind of get some sort of a civil war idea in, back into Civ, so it just hasn't happened. Yeah. Because yeah. then that, you could also use that as a defense against domination Civs, domination victory Civs, right? Yeah. You split them with their religions. You actually try to get them to have two separate religions for a long time and have them split down the middle, and now you're like, yes, divide yeah. and conquer. 
I, I, I'm kind of thinking that that is one of the stresses that could be put on. Not necessarily religion on its own would do it. It is another matter. I know there have been examples in the world that we all know of where that certainly has been a big effect. But there could be other stresses as well that come to bear. But that could be certainly one of them. have the luxury resources and you don't. Yeah. They're trading with Germany and you're trading with Japan, etc. You pile enough of those all together and all of a sudden there's a war. Yeah. It would be really great if you had some way of also tagging how long a city was affected by certain, or whether a city was at all affected by certain political policies or governments. Yeah, when exactly. When you change from, I think it's autocracy gives you the wonder bonus, right, to a different government. The cities that have wonders in them go slightly ballistic. And it's only a factor if the other five factors have aligned as well. And all. But all of a sudden you change from auto- your government to autocracy and bam, Scotland decides to leave. What I also want to do with the religions have teeth specifically is I want there to be a possibility right now in the game. You don't create your own religion. You can't win the religious victory at all. But what happens if you create a mod in which the religious victory winner is actually the person who spreads the religion the most rather than the person who created it? Yeah, you could do some sort of obviously a bonus for the person who created it. Yeah, that should count. But what if? So what happens if you create Protestantism and you're Lutheran, and then somebody comes along and creates Baptist? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested to see. You know, in Civ Four, you can have multiple Civs have the same religion, and uh, you know, you can kind of have these religious blocks kind of go into war with each other. We did quite a bit with that with Dune Wars. We kind of made the religions have very different effects with unique units and. You know, the, the sort of the dividing lines between yeah. religions were much stronger. So there are certain religions that automatically would have an animosity towards each other. Some would have friendliness towards each other, you know, and, and that kind of can make things a lot more interesting, like strategically. But I like the ideas about civil war as well. I mean, I think, I don't know, I, I assume some of the rest of you have played uh, Crusader Kings 2, but some of those ideas of have a rebellion inside your kingdom, you know, the, the bigger your empire gets, the harder it is to stop rebellions from happening, and you, you kind of, a bit more than Civ Five, where a few random barbarians spawn and you have to kill them, you know, actually a whole chunk of your empire turns a different colour and has a different leader and kind of a protracted challenge to bring that empire back under, under your control, and maybe you can even have the option... I think there was a mod that did this at one stage where you could say, right, I, I'm actually going to defect to the rebels <laughs> myself and become the leader of the rebels because I like the look of their thing more than I like the leader I currently am. You know, something like that would be cool. JFD did a couple of mods, didn't they, back in the five days? And one of those was based on loyalty and there certain factors that would determine whether or not a Civ was loyal, such as whether or not it had a garrison, uh, whether or not it had a road connection and all sorts of other factors. So, yeah. But we'll just have to see what what happens. We never know. You never know. Some some of these ideas might come in the inevitable expansion pack. Yeah, I mean, because they started with all the features that were in Civ Five by the end. Yeah. That's quite cool. It means they have to flesh out things. And I think religion's definitely going to be... I'd be surprised if we didn't see some enhancement of religion in the first expansion because it's the one that a lot of people have moaned about it not being all that great or all that interesting. So I'd be surprised that they didn't put some effort in that because I do think that they do listen to this feedback. But then there's a lot of different directions you could go with fleshing out just already a lot more. Well, what are they going to do? What new, completely new concepts are they going to introduce? Support the ongoing Polycast Patreon campaign. Collective achievements. Personal incentives. Month to month commitment. For more information, visit thepolycast.net slash Patreon. Call in today. In North America, the number is 301 637 7659. In Europe, 44121 288 7659. The only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. For more information on Modcast, log on to the series' official website at thepolycast.net. I think I've gone from the punt that I brought out. I needed quite a bit of help with that to get that up and running. There were several functions along the way that seemed to be not so much a mystery to me, but I couldn't put my finger on what was doing wrong, uh, and it was quite frustrating. It took me a few days 
I imagined in that time that I'd have a lot more done, but it just didn't happen. Just small things that I just couldn't work out. And then you're looking back through all the code, what, what's gone wrong. But once that's gone out, I mended a couple of things with it. I'm currently doing the Iceni sieve, and I haven't asked for any help yet. I know how to do certain things, and I think that's how it is. And people have to accept that if they're moving modding onto a new system, that there's going to be that learning process. And we know that possibly these mods will be changed a hundred times before the final whistle a few years down the line once everything's out there for Sub-6. I say that was yeah uh, well, well some yeah, serious... careful there in your eye oh, well, 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 <laughs> I misspoke yeah yeah Dan's gonna yeah. have to put in a disclaimer about <laughs> these views are not necessarily that of Dan you can hunt down and kill the rest of us but not Dan <laughs> yeah it seems like all of these free hosting sites don't actually want you to put anything on their hosting site yeah and if you do pay for it, they don't want you to put very much on there. I don't think it's particularly advertisers. So, Dan, don't put this in the modcast. If you have a work-in-progress mod that you upload to Steam, then you make an update that adds stuff, you can kill everybody's game in progress, and they don't even realize that the mod was updated. I just don't want the hassle of 9,000 Steam comments about you updated and it broke my game and it was the best game I had ever played and blah, blah, blah. And Dan probably wants to edit all this part out. Record date, 2017. Civilization 4 and 5 sound clips, copyright, take 2 interactive. Copyright Civilized Communication at civcom.net